everyone. So I am finally doing my top movies of 2020. There weren't a lot of movies released this year, last year, and certainly a lot less that I actually enjoyed. So for this year's video, I am going to be just talking about any movie that I am willing to recommend. So normally in these videos, I rank my movies. Um, going all the way to my number one movie of the year, but for this video, I'm going to change it up this year I am just going to pitch the movies very casually to you and if I really enjoyed the movie I will spend a little longer explaining my thoughts on the movie So the first batch of movies I'm gonna be talking about are fun little movies You can watch with your friends and family. These are the kind of movies I go into thinking there'll be background noise uh, so I can like scroll on social media and text friends, but I find myself gradually being drawn to it because it doesn't demand a lot of thinking, just good vibes and having fun. First is Vampires vs. the Bronx. The film follows a group of teenagers who are forced to protect their neighborhood in the Bronx when a gathering of vampires invades. This is a very silly and campy vampire movie that was perfect for watching with my siblings. It's a fun, short family movie with a diverse cast. Especially because it follows a bunch of kids, you just feel very chill while watching it. Over the Moon Fueled by memories of her mother, resourceful Fei Fei builds a rocket to the moon on a mission to prove the existence of a moon goddess. This movie is very pure and happy, and it's a musical. This movie is about grief and moving on, and it might make you cry or sob because I sobbed a lot throughout the whole movie. The characters are Asian and the cast is Asian, which is important because sometimes you don't know that the voices behind the characters are all white. And it really sucks when you see an animated movie and they're all people of color and then the voice actors are all white. So yes, the actors in this film, Asian. <clears throat> the world needed a hero. It got a hedgehog. Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh, my voice cracked. Powered with incredible speed, Sonic embraces his new home on Earth until he accidentally knocks out the power grid, sparking the attention of uncool, evil genius Dr. Robotnik. Now it's Super Villain versus Super Sonic in an all-out race across the globe to stop Robotnik from using Sonic's unique power to achieve world domination. I unironically love this film. It's just so... Sonic is a baby, I love him. Sonic the Hedgehog, the Lego movie, the Lego Batman movie, Power Rangers, Detective Pikachu, they are all just, they just, oh, my heart, they warm my heart. I hated that Jim Carrey was casted as Dr. Robotnik because I just find that Jim Carrey's humor is outdated and just not my type of humor. But to my surprise, his humor worked really well in this film, and I just think that he really encapsulated the character. Yes, there are fart jokes. I willingly watched a movie with fart jokes, and I like this movie. I think Sonic is fucking adorable, and I'm so excited for this film franchise, and the next movie, they confirmed that Tails and Knuckles are gonna be in it, and I'm just, oh man. I'm so excited. <laughs> Fun fact, um, Speed Me Up was a song made for this movie and it's sung by Wiz Khalifa, Ty Dolla Sign, um, Lil Yachty, and Suiko, Suiko. Anyways, it's number 26 on my top 100 songs of 2020. Just a little, <laughs> just a little fun fact. The next one, people have recommended this movie to me for so many years, and it took me 10 years to finally watch it. Megamind. Though he is the most brilliant supervillain the world has known, Megamind is the least successful. Thwarted time and time again by heroic Metro Man, Megamind is more surprised than anyone when he actually manages to defeat his longtime enemy. But without Metro Man, Megamind has no purpose in life, so he creates a new opponent who quickly decides that it's more fun to be a bad guy than a hero. I can't believe how genuinely funny this is. Like, I can't believe how much I enjoyed this movie when I watched it, because I was kind of like, yo, let me just watch this movie um, for fun, because everyone keeps telling me to watch it, and I haven't, and it was hilarious. <laughs> this is probably what people think the Joker is like, and why that's why the Joker is redeemable. Um, the Joker is nothing like this. Not at all. Did you know the galaxy brain meme 
originated from this movie. Kidding, but like they're very similar. Megamind and Galaxy Brain. I think it'd be really funny though if we started saying Megamind instead of Galaxy Brain. Little Miss Sunshine. The Hoover family put the fun back in dysfunctional by piling into a Volkswagen bus and heading out to California to support a daughter in her bid to win the Little Miss Sunshine contest. The sanity of everyone involved is stretched to the limit as the group's quirks cause epic problems as they travel along their interstate route. I did talk about this movie previously in another video when I finished my film watch list and talk about all those movies on there. This is the first out of a handful from that list that are going to be talked about again for this final 2020 film list. Out of all the ones on this family fun list, this one is rated R. Um, I still think it's really fun to watch with friends and family, but just obviously for a more older audience is a genuinely hilarious film and they're so chaotic and it just fills me with love and oh my god there's just so much secondhand embarrassment in this film i literally had to skip the climax of the film because i just i couldn't watch it it was so embarrassing the movie overall is fucking wild and i think really rewatchable just because of how funny and just good vibes. Oh my god, stop saying good vibes. I think I'm gonna say that like 500 times in this video. I will say the first 15 minutes, it's really rough. It gives off the vibe of a very outdated film and then when I first started watching it, I just stopped after 15 minutes. I just couldn't do it, uh, but then I picked it up again after a few months and I really enjoyed it. So if you push through that, you'll like the movie, maybe. I don't know. You might like it, you might not. Okay, so moving on to thrillers. Uh, I'm really excited for this list. Four sci-fi thrillers and three crime thrillers. Unlike some of the other lists in this video, I genuinely recommend every single movie on this list because they are all so fucking good. The first is High Life, a non-linear story about a group of criminals serving their death sentences by doing a space mission to obtain energy from a black hole. The official synopsis of the movie is definitely a lot different from what I just said, but I feel like it doesn't pitch the movie to the audience right. I like the concept of this movie, especially because it's a space thriller. I intended on watching this as background noise, but it has this eerie space vibe to it that kept my eyes glued to the screen. Also, there's a fuck box, which like, what the fuck is that? Um, when you watch a movie, you'll see it, and then you're gonna be like, yeah, I don't know what the fuck else I was expecting. This movie is really great, but it's also a lot of trigger warnings. Make sure you watch, you look at all the trigger warnings I list at the bottom of the screen. I don't usually talk about rewatches, but Nightcrawler is exempted from this rule because I remember really liking it in theaters and I don't remember w the specifics of the movie. So when I rewatched it this year, I was just in awe all over again. When Louis Bloom, a con man desperate for work, muscles into the world of LA crime journalism, he blurs the line between observer and participant to become the star of his own story. This is a neo-noir psychological thriller. There is no movie out there that is like this, and that is what I love about it. I mean, maybe in theme, but this film is just so unique. Also, Jake Edenhill's acting in this movie just blows me away. He plays the most disgusting, unsympathetic man, and I can't describe it, but he's greasy and slimy. Physically and like personality-wise, somehow his hair is so disgustingly greasy and I just bleh, bleh. And I think he's a sociopath, which is a term I don't like to use lightly, but I think that's that's how the character was supposed to be portrayed and i think that jake's acting like he just did really well bringing that character to life when he's on screen you really feel that tension and uneasiness and it's just ugh. it's basically a movie about journalism and news people and how they just don't give a fuck about people's lives because it's just about getting that story that will get you money Upgrade by Lee Vanell, yes. A brutal mugging leaves Grey Trace paralyzed in the hospital and his beloved wife dead. A billionaire inventor soon offers Trace a cure, an artificial intelligence implant called STEM that will enhance his body. Now able to walk, Grey finds that he also has superhuman strength and agility, skills he uses to seek revenge against the thugs who destroyed his life. This was my first good movie of 2020. I had watched a lot of movies in January and was feeling like I was in a slump because I couldn't find something I enjoyed. And then I watched Upgrade and then I felt a lot better. 
I literally watched this the day before I watched Birds of Prey. So Birds of Prey could have been my first good movie of 2020, but Upgrade stole that spot. It's a simple sci-fi thriller that I'm sure has been done before, but I think it has some unique moments and because it's rated R, they could do so much more. A cool little thing uh, about this movie that I'm sure every single review for Upgrade has talked about, they stylize the camera work to complement the fact that the main character is not in control of his own body and that artificial intelligence is controlling him. I think it's brilliant and one of the highlights of this movie. I do mention this in the content warnings below, but I just want to emphasize that this movie does perpetuate the ableist trope of someone becoming disabled and then being magically cured. Chronicle. Three high school friends gain superpowers after making an incredible discovery underground. Soon they find their lives spinning out of control and their bonds tested as they embrace their darker sides. If you don't like found footage and if shaky cams hurt your eyes, this might not be the movie for you. It certainly wasn't for me when I tried it a few years ago, but I tried it again and pulled through because I've always heard so many good things about it. I always end up appreciating films that take the superpower trope and do something different with it, which is what this movie does. Super 8. During the summer of 1979, a group of friends witness a train crash and investigate subsequent unexplained events in their small town. One of my favorite podcasters said this about this movie. If it was released later on a streaming site like Netflix as a series, it would have been as successful as Stranger Things, which I entirely agree with. Both have similar vibes, nods to nostalgia, themes, and a younger cast and focus on family. All right, Denis Villeneuve. Denis Villeneuve. This happens every time. This is like the third video in, the row, in a row where I struggle speaking, pronouncing a French name. Anyway, prisoners. Ooh, okay, let's go. When Keller Dover's daughter and her friend go missing, he takes matters into his own hands as the police pursue multiple leads and the pressure mounts. Yo, Denny's mind. I... Mm, I love his movies. I love his mind. He... Excellent work. Excellent work. Um, this is a very, very good movie. I was stressed the whole time and it was amazing. You do not get a break. You get no emotional breaks at all. It's just constant stress from the beginning to the end. It's filled with brutal, raw emotions and the actors really pull through with the acting in this movie. Bad Genius. A genius level high school student makes money after developing elaborate methods to help other students cheat. This is such a good movie. Also one of my top movies from this year. I believe in cheating. When the education system is made to fuck you over, I 100% believe in it. That being said, the end of the movie is fucking dumb, but everything else is really fucking amazing. The people who worked on this movie, oh my god, super creative when it came to making methods of cheating, and they made this into like a heist movie, which was really fucking awesome. Now onto my, sadly, very short list of horror movies. Byzantium. Mayhem follows when two vampires on the run from a kindred group take refuge at a seaside British community. It's a gothic horror vampire movie. I like the storytelling, especially how it went back and forth between their past and their present. And I found that the vampire lore and the vampire politics were very interesting in this film. Candyman. This is the 1992 version, not the one that is set to come out whenever the pandemic is done. <laughs> the Candyman, a murderous soul with a hook for a hand, is accidentally summoned to reality by a skeptic grad student researching the monster's myth. I mainly watched this out of curiosity because the reboot is coming out eventually, <laughs> and I surprisingly found it a very interesting film, especially considering it's from the early 90s and is a horror film. I find that a lot of horror films from that time are usually really cringy and a little boring to watch, but I didn't feel that way about this one. Relic 2020, the only horror movie that was released in 2020 that I liked. <laughs> when Edna goes missing, her daughter and granddaughter return home to find her. They discover a haunting presence hanging over the home, which is taking over Edna's mind. The premise and, well, the whole movie in general is very common in horror. It's about a haunted house and its effect on the people who live in it. The reason why this film stuck with me is because I really liked the rot in this film. Rot is one of the few things that still get under my skin. 
um, its graphic rot and cannibalism. So how rot was portrayed in this film and the artistry of it in this film makes it worth recommending to me. Interview with the Vampire. I can't believe I never watched this movie. <laughs> Born as an 18th century lord, Louis is now a bicential vampire, telling his story to an eager biographer. Suicidal after the death of his family, he meets Lestat, a vampire who persuades him to choose immortality over death and become his companion. This is a very horny vampire movie, and it's queer. Very, very horny. <laughs> it's literally about two vampire men uh raising their vampire child together and fighting a lot like a couple like an old married couple because that is what they are i feel like i watch a lot of vampire movies but none have really stood out and stuck with me the way that this film has it's funny it's queer it's unique and brilliant you know i just really like this movie and i think it's highly rewatchable you know despite its length it maintains that intriguing storytelling throughout the whole two hours. All right, we are down to the last four movies. This one is just miscellaneous because they didn't really have like a similar theme with each other. The Old Guard, a group of mercenaries, all centuries old immortals with the ability to heal themselves, discover someone is onto their secret and they must fight to protect their freedom. This is a fun little movie with gay people. There's a gay couple and Charlie Theron plays a gay woman in an action film again good for her. She is not one of the people that is- she doesn't have a partner in this movie. The old guard is fun. The fight scenes are fun. I personally have a soft spot for fight scenes that include a stunt in which someone- someone's neck gets broken and that was in this film and so like I loved that particular stunt. Bombshell. A group of women take on Fox News head Roger Ailes in the toxic environment he presided over the network, based on a true story. This is a movie about sexual harassment in the workplace. It's definitely one you have to put your phone away for because it demands your full attention and for you to be emotionally invested in what's happening to these women. The advertisements for this movie were so bad. I barely saw any and when I did, they never mentioned that this movie was about sexual harassment. It just looked like Oscar bait with a bunch of A-list actors. I think this film was great in that the actors did an amazing job. Margot Robbie in particular, a little side note because it's important, one of the people in the film, Megan Kelly, did come out in 2020 to confirm that Roger Ailes did ask women to do things that were in the movie, but he also did things that were, quote, worse than that, and that the film, quote, let Roger off easy. Megan Kelly did post a full discussion on YouTube, which I will link in the description. Disclosure, a look at Hollywood's depiction of transgender people and the impact of this on American culture. I don't watch a lot of documentaries, but this, this is amazing. It feels like watching this movie fills me with hope because just seeing the amount of trans people there are in the entertainment industry, and it is especially important that this documentary was racially diverse because the industry favors white trans people over trans people of color. And it was comforting to learn about her history and feel the pain and suffering alongside other trans people. Disclosure is a very detailed look at trans history in the US and in the entertainment industry. And it's just, it's just really informative and I highly, highly recommend this to every single person out there. This was definitely one of my top five films of 2020. And now for the best movie, I saved the best for last, Birds of Prey and the Emancipation, the fantabulous emancipation of one Harley Quinn. After splitting with the Joker, Harley Quinn joins superheroes Black Canary, Huntress, and Renee Montoya to save a young girl from an evil crime lord. This was my favorite film of the year. I don't even know what to say about this. I'm overwhelmed. I talk about this movie every day with the DC fan base. I love it so much that we did an episode for it on my podcast. I just, there's just so many things for me to say about this movie. This is a really good movie. I love the story. I love the characters. I love the actors. I love the stunt choreography, like the fighting style. I love the costume design and it's all wrapped up in less than two hours. It is such a refreshing film and it is just amazing. If you asked me to recommend one movie out of this entire list, I would recommend Birds of Prey and and maybe Disclosure or maybe like Prisoners, but no, no. 
definitely like number one choice without a thought birds of prey so that's the end of this video how was this format i seem to do a different setup for my top films of the year every single time i do it is it do you like it like do you like that i'm casually recommending videos instead of like trying to quickly review them in like a minute <laughs> also i wanted to take the time to recommend some really awesome websites really quickly does the dog die which is a hub of content warnings for films books video games podcasts you name it i've been using this site forever and i it's so useful because the content warnings are so specific all the content warnings i listed in this video are included in the website in fact there were a lot of content warnings for so many of the movies that i just couldn't list them all in my video descriptions and there are some uncommon content warnings too such as stalking does a black person die first hospital scenes syringes sad endings is a child's favorite toy destroyed and is santa the tooth fairy etc spoiled the last two i think are really important if you're watching with like a child <laughs> it's community based so people just come together and post content warnings for movies that they're willing to input for unconsenting media is also a website i've been using for a really long time but it is more focused towards sexual assault and rape and they have categories specifically to identify incest sexual relationships between an adult and a minor and if the rape is off screen or on screen and a couple more and that is the end of this video thank you all for watching if you like the content if you like the content please consider liking and maybe subscribing if you want to um and please don't be too shy to comment on my videos. I love responding to y'all's comments and interacting with you on there. And yeah, whenever, see y'all next time, whenever that will be, because time is time. Goes by fast, doesn't it? Yep, what a brilliant way to end this video. Anyways, goodbye. Thank you for watching the video. I already said see y'all next time, but see y'all next time. <laughs> mm -hmm.